Welcome to Working with Health IT Systems, Protecting Privacy, Security, and Confidentiality in HIT Systems. This is Lecture B. This lecture continues the discussion of privacy, security, and confidentiality of protected health information, PHI, in relation to HIT systems. We will complete our look at the HIPAA security rule by discussing physical and technical safeguards. We will conclude with a discussion of formal risk analysis and management processes and the meaningful use requirements related to privacy and security. The Objectives for Protecting Privacy, Security, and Confidentiality in HIT Systems, Lecture B, R2, formulate strategies to minimize threats to security, privacy, and confidentiality in HIT systems. The HIPAA security rule defines physical safeguards as, quote, physical measures, policies, and procedures to protect a covered entity's electronic information systems and related buildings and equipment from natural and environmental hazards and unauthorized intrusion, end quote. Let's take a look at these safeguards in more detail. It is important to limit physical access to systems that contain ePHI, as well as access to the facilities that house these systems. This must be done, of course, in a way that allows authorized access. Facility access controls are methods that can be used to control physical access and may include controls such as door locks, electronic as access control systems, alarms, private security service, video surveillance, and identification badges. The rationale to use to determine who has access must be documented. This is an important point worth reiterating, as in fact, the HIPAA regulations require that all security decisions be documented. HIPAA defines a workstation as, quote, an electronic computing device, for example, a laptop or desktop computer, or any other device that performs similar functions and electronic media stored in its immediate environment, end quote. Traditionally, we think of workstations as computing boxes that sit on someone's desk, but we must be diligent to apply security safeguards to any electronic device that can access or store ePHI, including laptops, desktops, PDAs, smartphones, USB thumb drives, etc. Policies and procedures must be put into place to address what devices can be used with HIT systems, what functions these devices can perform, and in what environment, the physical attributes of the surroundings where the device is used. Because the nature of healthcare organizations' business operations vary greatly, every electronic device and location where it is used must be carefully examined and controlled to ensure the privacy and security of ePHI and HIT systems. Consider some examples. Are the desktop computers at a nurse's station positioned such that an unauthorized individual walking by cannot easily see ePHI? Are the workstations configured to automatically prevent access when a clinician steps away? For example, password-protected screensavers. Are physicians permitted to access HIT systems containing ePHI from home? If so, what are the risks? Do the benefits of access justify the risk? And are these being adequately mitigated? Are employees allowed to bring USB thumb drives, phones with cameras that could be used to take a picture of a workstation containing ePHI, and other electronic devices into the clinical setting? The final standard under, under the physical safeguards we will cover is device and media controls. A covered entity must have policies and procedures in place to control the acquisition, movement, and disposal of hardware and electronic media containing ePHI. Any media that is used to store ePHI, such as backup tapes, must be properly secured to prevent theft. If this media is disposed of, the organization must properly destroy all of the ePHI that it contains. Even if media is reused within the organization, steps must be taken to ensure that ePHI is properly destroyed. For example, a computer moved from a clinical area where ePHI is accessed to an administrative area where ePHI access is not appropriate must have the ePHI wiped from its hard drive. It's important to note that simply deleting a file from a computer may not actually destroy the contents of the file. In fact, Reformatting a hard drive does not necessarily rid the media of all ePHI. 
There are very specific technical procedures that need to be followed to ensure that information stored on media is properly destroyed, so it is important to seek help from a competent IT professional when doing this task. The final category of HIPAA security safeguards we will examine is technical safeguards. The security rule defines technical safeguards as, quote, the technology and the policy and procedures for its use that protect electronic protected health information and control access to it, end quote. As we look at the standards in this area, we will include a few examples of types of specific technologies that can be used to help mitigate security risks. It's important to note, however, that the HIPAA guidelines attempt to be technology neutral, and any security measure that can be used to mitigate a risk can be considered. Factors such as cost and feasibility to implement can and should be factored into the risk analysis and risk manage management implementation. Access controls provide users with privileges to access functionality and data within an information system, which could include HIT systems, file servers, desktops, etc. These controls should be configured to provide the minimum level of access necessary for the user to perform job functions. These controls should be configured following the policies and procedures set up under the Administrative sec Safeguard section of the rule, which we covered earlier. Access controls should include unique user identification, a sum mechanism, such as a username and password, that uniquely identifies users of an information system and can be tracked to used to track user activity within inf information systems that contain ePHI. Emergency access procedures, which detail how someone would gain access to ePHI in the event of an emergency. Automatic log off that ends an electronic session after a specified time of inactivity. Encryption and decryption of ePHI stored in information systems. The integrity standard requires the protection of ePHI from unauthorized or unintended alteration or destruction. There are many ways that ePHI might be unintentionally altered or destroyed, ranging from an employee accidentally or, or intentionally deleting data from an HIT system to the failure of an electronic component that leads to database corruption and altered data. There are technical controls that can be implemented to enable detection of alteration of data. For example, hashing algorithms can be used to calculate a checksum value for an ePHI document or record. If the document or record is altered, rerunning the hashing algorithm against the document or record will detect the alteration because the checksum will change. The change can be assumed to be an integrity violation if there is no record of the change in an audit log. The person or entity authentication standard requires a covered entity to, quote, implement procedures to verify that a person or entity seeking access to electronic protected health information is the one claimed, end quote. In other words, authentication is the method by which an electronic system is able to confirm that users are who they claim to be. We're all very familiar with the technical technical control that is most often used with electronic systems to verify the authenticity of a user, namely requiring someone to provide information that only they know, most commonly in the form of a password, passphrase, or PIN. There are other ways that identity can be confirmed, including requiring that something like an individual possesses, like a smart card, a token, or a key, or requiring something unique to the individual namely the use of biometric authentication. Biometrics refers to devices that can scan features of an individual that are likely to be unique, such as fingerprints, voice patterns, facial patterns or iris patterns, and using the scan of these features to grant access to information systems. Risk analysis will help determine which type of authentication mechanism is most appropriate to use. Password authentication is the easiest to implement, but may not be the most secure given the ease with which users can share password information. If password complexity requirements are lax, passwords into critical systems potentially could be guessed. To improve the security of password authentication, complexity requirements should be enforced. For example, requiring that passwords be eight or more characters long, contain a variety of alphabetic and numeric characters, etc. 
automatically lock an account if a password is typed incorrectly after so many attempts, to prevent brute force guessing of passwords, and to require users to change passwords regularly. These measures, unfortunately, have the side effect of making password authentication less convenient for the end user, which often results in the end user writing down her password on a sticky note or some other insecure location that could be stolen, which is a HIPAA violation, by the way. Administrative policies and procedures that prohibit writing down passwords could help prevent this, especially if there are serious sanctions that are enforced for violating the, pass the policies. However, most organizations will not rely exclusively on password authentication for access to systems containing sensitive ePHI. Using one of the other authentication techniques may be a better option, or combining the use of multiple mechanisms is an even better option. Using password authentication along with a smart card is an example of two-factor authentication, meaning that two authentication mechanisms are used to verify the identity of the user. The final technical safeguard we will examine is transmission security. Transmission security controls prevent unauthorized access to ePHI that is transmitted over computer networks, such as local area networks, LANs, or the internet. Some methods that are commonly used to transfer electronic information from place to place include email, over the internet, or over private networks. An example of this is an EHR system that has a client program running on a workstation that communicates with a server and transmits ePHI over the local area network. Transmission of ePHI over any network is permitted as long as appropriate controls are in place to protect ePHI from unauthorized access. There are two important methods that help ensure that ePHI is transferred securely, integrity controls and encryption. Integrity controls are measures that ensure that data transmitted electronically are not inappropriately modified, either intentionally or accidentally, such as problems with the network. This is similar to the requirement to ensure the integrity of data stored on electronic media and the same mechanisms, such as hashing algorithms and checksums, can be used to detect unauthorized or accidental alterations of ePHI transferred over a network. Encryption is also an important safeguard to use when transferring data over a network. Data is encoded before being sent over a network, which means it is converted from a format like plain text that is understandable into a format that is scrambled and undecipherable. If the data is in inappropriately accessed during the transmission, it won't be decipherable. The data can only be converted back into an understandable format once it reaches its intended destination. Encryption can also be used as a method of ensuring the integrity of ePHI during transmission, since altered encrypted data will not be able to be decoded back to its original state thus indicating inappropriate or accidental tampering of the data. An example of transmission security that you may be familiar with is the use of SSL to encrypt the transmission of information over the web. A website address that contains HTTPS is using this standard protocol to encrypt the transfer of information from a web server to a web browser located on a workstation computer. We've covered a wide, a wide array of security safeguards that can and should be implemented to protect ePHI and HIT systems. Although we did not cover in great detail specific technologies, there is a large and diverse set of tools that could be used. Deciding what security safeguards and which specific technologies to use must be done as part of a careful risk analysis process. We are revisiting the risk analysis and management process here because it is critically important to any privacy and security program, regardless of the security management system standard that you may choose or be required to use. The HIPAA regulation does not dictate a single approach to conduct risk analysis of systems containing ePHI. Many of the resources discussed at the beginning of this unit, such as the NIST 800 series of, of publications, specifically SP 800-39, provide a framework to conduct risk analysis and to create a risk management strategy. The basic framework for this and other risk management strategies are similar and include elements such as gathering data on potential threats and vulnerabilities, like viruses and known exploits of IT systems, 
assessing cur current security measures like antivirus software, policies and procedures to apply security patches to IT systems, determining the likelihood of security exploits, the impact of such exploits to the business, and the corresponding level of risk that the organization can tolerate, and finally, identifying security measures that are needed to mitigate unacceptable risk. All risk management plans include development of a plan to develop and implement security safeguards that are identified as needed based on the risk analysis process and procedures for ongoing evaluation and maintenance of security measures. Risk analysis should be a continuous process in which a covered entity regularly reviews its records to track access to EPHI and detect security incidents, periodically evaluates the effectiveness of security measures put in place, and regularly reevaluates potential risks to EPHI. The importance of a formal risk analysis and management plan for healthcare organizations that accommodates the HIT systems that support the operations of these organizations cannot be overemphasized. The recent enforcement activity by OCR, highlighted earlier in this unit, demonstrates some of the serious consequences if an organization is negligent. Those settlements also highlight what is likely one of the largest areas of risk for every organization, the actions of employees working for the organization. For the sake of meeting, meeting incentive standards, the meaningful use requirements emphasize specific areas of privacy and security that should be addressed by HIT systems, specifically EHR systems. These requirements are congruent with the larger HIPAA standards as outlined in the privacy and security rules. These include encryption and decryption of electronic health information, Integrity, verification that electronic health information has not been altered while stored or in transit. This is particularly important with a meaningful use emphasis on HIE. Re record treatment, payment, and healthcare operations disclosures. Access controls, unique user identification and only authorized access. Emergency access, also known as break glass, which refers to someone being able to access data in an emergency she wouldn't have access to normally. Automatic log off. Audit logs, ability for the users to report based on the audit log. These are all part of the meaningful use and they re-emphasize technical safeguards that are already in the HIPAA security rule. This concludes Lecture B of Protecting Privacy, Security, and Confidentiality in HIT Systems. In summary, in this unit, we have explored what privacy, security, and confidentiality mean in relation to HIT systems. As we have explored the range of security safeguards that can be employed to protect the confidentiality of health information in HIT systems, we've learned about some of the common threats to data in these systems. Hopefully, you have learned some of the strategies that can be used to minimize threats to privacy, security, and confidentiality in HIT systems such as a formal risk analysis and management process for your organization that is facilitated by regulations, such as HIPAA, and or security management system standards, such as the ISO 27000 series or the NIST 800 series. Such effort will ensure that the fundamental security of health information is assured, leading to trust on the part of providers and patients that will be necessary for HIT to realize its potential for healthcare transformation.